Hi there fellow guitarists, welcome to MB Guitar, my name is Josh Rogers. In this series of three tutorials I'm going to be teaching you how to play Serenata Española by Joaquin Malatz. It's a beautiful piece, it's full of like, wonderful technique. Yeah, it's just a really invigorating, lively kind of piece. If you want some more information, like how to find the score and so on and so forth, check the link in the description below for all related information about this tutorial, scores, so on and so forth. Alright, let's play this. It starts off uh, with two chords really, just an A minor and an E7 chord. And like sort of flashing it up a little bit is this. In between, like a, it's a, an inverted mordant or a lower mordant. Okay, so let's have a look at what I'm doing there. I've got the A minor chord, but what I'm doing, I'm actually sort of barring across this D string with my first finger so that I can do that pull off and hammer on like that and then next time I do it just with the third finger instead when I'm doing the A minor it's with the second finger and then when I switch to the E7 it's with the third finger okay so let's have a look at that open A and then so I'm picking the A minor chord there second fret D second fret G first fret B all three of those notes and I pull off and then hammer on on that D string. So it's going from two to one to two. Then I pick those three strings again, the D, G and B strings. Then I'm just changing the bass note there to the E, then the same three strings together. Then what I'm doing here is just simply moving these two fingers up to the next two strings. And I'm going to put my fourth finger on the third fret of the B string. And I'm going to basically do the same finger picking pattern that I did for the first chord. Okay. So I'm not really going to explain that. I hope you can just get it from there. Same notes and everything for that pull off. So. Just at the end there I do a slight pull back in the speed or the tempo. And then we're into the kind of the main melody. I should mention here that I've sort of joined two different transcriptions together. I've got the Tarega original transcription, and I also spent a long, long time watching and listening to Julian Bream's version on YouTube. And what I did was basically transcribe by ear what Julian Bream was doing and just added it into Tarega's transcription. So I have like joined both of them. I prefer Julian Breen's version. Personally I think it's the best on YouTube. He always has this knack of like putting in some extra notes or playing it slightly differently to everybody else and I love his style. There's a few extra notes in here that you may not hear in other people's performances. So in this open introductory section we've got the open A and then 5, 4, 5 on the B string. And what I do there is I sort of start off pianissimo and then I move I change the volume up a little bit. There. So what I'm doing is a slide to the 10th fret on the B string, 10th fret on the D and an open A together. And then I go to the 9th fret on the B. Then I slide back to that 5th fret. That is a uh, 5th fret on the B, 7th on the E together, and then followed by 6 on the D, 7 on the G, then 7 on the A and those two together again. And then I slide from 6 to 7 on the A and do those two again. Then I play that same line. But then this time we've got a upper mordant from 9 to 10 to 9 on the B string. And then the same thing. So from there. Then we've got this line. Starts with open A, then a slide from 5 to 9 on the G. That sounds a bit strange slowly, but when you bring it up to speed, it's cool. That's a 7 on the D, 
8 on the G, followed by an open E. 6 on the D and 8 on the E together, followed by 10 on the E. From an interpretation point of view, I sort of speed that up. And you can do a little uh, crescendo and maybe pull back on the volume at that 12th fret. So there, that's an open G and 12 on the E at the same time. And then 8 on the B string. Then you do that again, 12 on the E to 8 on the B. And you've got that. Sounds, again, there's an, like a, what you might call a horrible clash. And there, that's going from a G to a G sharp. It sounds real, like, horrible like this, but in the context it's beautiful. So yeah, we've got open G and 12 on the E at the same time, followed by 9 on the B. Then we're just moving that shape up. It's open G and 13 on the E at the same time, followed by 10 on the B. Then 12 on the E, 12 on the B, open G, 10 on the E. So that's uh, a full bar at the 8th fret, so then you're doing 8 on the 6th and 12 on the E at the same time. And then another mordant, 10, 12, 10 on the 1st string, like that. So. And then that 8 on the 1st string. And then 9 on the G and 8 on the B together. And then this slide from 9 to 10 on the A string. You'll notice that this sort of is a very common theme throughout this, this piece. So after you've done that, then you do those two strings again. 9 on the G, 8 on the B together. Then we have this other let's call it a motif that kind of idea happens a couple of times in this piece so we've got open D then 7, 6, 7 on the first string then I slide that up and I play 10, 10 on the G and E at the same time followed by 12 on the B and then open E and 10 on the B and I'm doing a mordant from 10 to 12 to 10. Then pick like that. Then to 9 on the B. Just after this 9 there is an open E there. Then that slide thing again. From 8 to 9 on the D. And then 7 on the G and open E together. Okay. So from here. But this time, there's a little more than just to excite excite the uh, the line a little bit. So that's just a mordant after the open D seven eight seven, then six seven, and then repeat. Then we do it again. Stop there and repeat what you just did. Okay, so that sounds like this. Then you're going to do that same sort of thing again, but it's a different, a different set of notes. Okay, so that's a bar at the sixth on the A, and you're going to go seven eight seven more than on the first string, then six seven, sliding up. It's eleven on the E, eleven on the G together, and then to the twelve on the B. Do that twice. And then we have this sort of 
really cool descending kind of line. Yeah, nice series of thirds there. So that's an open E, and then 12, 13, 12, and then a series of double stops. That's uh, 12 on the B, 10 on the E together. Then move that that way two frets. Then back there, I'm going to do a little caricature there. That's a pull off from 12 to 10 on the first. I like to use a ponticello tone throughout this too. Thanks, Julian Breed. Then, so sa same shape and just leading from that 7, 8, 7 like this. 7, 8, 7. That's 5 on the E, 6 on the B, and then you're just going from 5 to 4, and back there. And then back to 4. Then changing strings. That's 7 on the G, 6 on the B. Then to 5-5 five, five on the same strings. Then 4-3, same strings. 2-1, same strings, pull off to the open on the B. We're going to guide finger this one to the 7th fret, so that's 6 on the D, 7 on the G, open B, open E together. Then an open E again, and to the 5 on the D, followed by open E. Then a slide from 5 to 8 on the A, open E again, then to 7 on the A, open E, open E, and then... 7 on the A, 6 on the D, 7 on the G, open E. Sounds like a lot, but it's not too bad. Let's go from here. From a compositional point of view, this is an inverted pedal. So we've got that A, we keep going back to that A. It's, you might be familiar with the term pedal point. Well, this is a classic example of it. You don't need to put too much emphasis on that E. Okay, after that, it's back to the beginning. Thanks very much for tuning in. My name is Josh Rogers and I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Make sure to subscribe to me uh, on this YouTube channel and click the notification bell and that way you're always informed when I upload something. And if you are interested in checking out all my other videos, like the second and third tutorials that I make for most pieces, then make sure you head across to my website. Link is down below. As you know, let your fingers fly.